Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Today I'd like to discuss knives. Now in my previous videos I've talked about axes, I've talked about kukris, I've talked about pocket knives. But in this one I would like to discuss what is a good bushcraft knife. Now, let me make a slight definition here. The definition is this. The most effective knife there is, is the knife you have with you. We've come up in a world and a society that's taught us that there's always something better. You know, this car, well there's a better model, well, better seats, better leather, better sound, better tires, better, better, better. There's always a better. And to some degree that's very true. Quality of steel does vary. Quality of design, quality of handles, quality of a lot of different things vary. And that's something that you have to look at whenever you're purchasing a knife. But ultimately it comes down to what the, the knife was designed for and how you utilize it. There is no perfect knife because whatever topic you come up with, I can bet you that there's a reason that knife would be the worst knife for that choice. A very small precision knife which is absolutely fantastic for cleaning quail and small game, is a little daunting to use to clean a moose. Same time, a big old cleaver used for that is not very good at, you know, filleting small fish and small game. Help you skin a squirrel or a chipmunk if it's really bad. So each knife has a strength. And like I talked about the blade designs of the pocket knives, when you look at a knife, there's some general guidelines to tell you what the knife was designed to do, what job it's slotted for. It can be made to do all other functions to some degree, but you see what it was designed for. Now in cars, we'd say a sports car, a sedan, an SUV, a bus. Each one does a different job. Yes, they all transport, but they all do a different job. Bigger, badder, whatever. Now, let's start at the big end. Biggest knife, my beloved Kukri. <clears throat> now, as you know, in my past videos, they're very thick, broad blade designed for chopping. This is a chopping knife. And what that is, it serves the purpose of both a machete, a big knife, and a small hatchet in one tool. So one tool for that. And it's very good as a big tool. I, it, when you uh, read Nesmunk, he carried a small pocket knife for precision work, a belt knife, and a double bit axe for handling all his chopping. This serves the purpose for me for the chopping in my area and in my territory. So this knife for that kind of woodwork, for shelter building, batoning, splitting up firewood, digging a little cat hole, you know, draw planing, etc. This is my go-to knife. And it's designed for that. Yes, I can use it to fillet game, and yes, I can use it to something else, but it requires a pretty good bit of skill and a lot of practice and a very sharp blade in order to do that. But this is on a the big end of what would be used. Now this is a shrade Stream survival. It's almost as thick as the cougar. It's a full quarter inch thick, if not a little bit more. When you see a knife like this, big robust handle, thick spine. A thick spine indicates it's designed to do a job where we do not want the knife to flex. Batoning, hacking, prying, etc. That's what a big thick blade is for. It tapers well. It's got this long curve. So you can get it down to a good edge, so it's going to be able to do fine work, kind of like slicing tomatoes or slicing the vegetables fairly easy. The cooker is a little blunt for that. And we're stepping away from the hacking and we're getting more to where I need a spine. Now, big game. I'm cleaning a moose or something like that. I want a good sized knife so that when I go in, Three quarters of the length of the blade is the depth of the cut that I can generate because vertical, all I can do is saw and that leaves saw teeth at the bottom of the cut that still hooks it together. If I angle it about this angle and I cut, that means that about three quarters of the actual size of the blade, 
So for processing something big that I needed a lot of spine, a lot of bill, bear down processing wood, this would be a good choice. Remember, thick spine, think tough job. Thin profile, slice. Okay? A small kukri. This one is thin, er, than the big one. It serves as a knife with the kukri designs. It's thin, so it slices well. It has a point, so I can pierce in. I can also do all the little jobs that a kukri can do in a lighter form, like build small shelters, baton. Perfectly fine for batoning, kindling, and stuff like that. And a little bit of chopping. But hacking with a knife is not a good idea. Knives are not designed for the hacking. Sorta. Of. Yeah. But once we get past that and get more toward a true belt knife, it doesn't. The, the blade is, design is wrong, it's too light, and you're bouncing more than you're doing anything. It takes a whole lot of this to where you could just bear down and cut, do the same job. So, same design I talked about a minute ago in the kukri, but this edge is now thinner and shorter. Notice how short it's getting this way. Okay? Here's another knife that we're all familiar with. A K-bar. Now, now we're getting into a specialty idea. Strengths of the K-bar. The K-bar is actually a pretty good knife being used as a knife. It has a fairly good spine up here. It comes down. It's normally made out of good steel and it takes a good edge. Weaknesses of this design is it is relatively thin in the edge. This tip is easily broken or bent because it curves back and almost like a finger stuck back like that. And I may modify this in a future video where I show how I take that off and turn this into more of a spear point, make it a little more efficient. The cross guard sticks up too much right here and interferes your hand so you can't choke up on it like that. So I cut mine off and file it so I can choke up on the knife for work. This knife is a field knife that's been used in military applications for probably a hundred years. But the object of the game is, it's a knife for doing your usual camp store, and then it's meant to be as a combat weapon as well, thus that back hook tip. It's not good for skinning, it's not good for certain things. But by looking at that profile, relatively light, relatively thin, graceful tip, it's meant to do fairly light work up here. Now, it's also a rat tang. Batoning is not good for these knives because where that tang and blade join, if they're true 90 degrees, that's weaknesses. Because as you baton, and a lot of people get up here and they make a fist, and they start whack, 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 you're putting all the stress right there because your arm is keeping the back. If you're going to baton something like this, lighten up and just hold it with your fingertips. Let the blade kind of move a little. You know, make a loop like that and make a donut around it. Because then you don't put nearly as much stress right here on this when you're batoning. The blade design is fairly wide, and that means straight cuts through something, okay? The butcher knife. Everybody's familiar with this. And if you're starting out and you're wanting to start in as cheaply as possible, this is what I recommend, an old hickory butcher knife. Now you can change this shape to a different blade tip design if you don't like that. And that's easily done. If you'll do a couple of searches on YouTube, you'll find where people modify these into all kinds of designs. It's a full tang, one piece of good steel. It throws sparks and etc. But that thin, wide blade. Now, what does that tell you? Thin. So it does not need a lot of power. Wide. Long, straight cuts. Wide blades are difficult, excuse me, to turn because it's too much leverage when you're trying to do precise work inside something. The wide blade will get in the way. But for cutting like meat or general cutting purposes, it's fine. But remember, wide blades equal long straight cuts. Okay? Now we get into what is considered the bush knives. Okay? Or, you know, woods, woods type knives. This is a condor bush lower that I've carried for a year and I've done a review on this. It's got a good thick spine, wide blade, bevel. And what does that tell us? Thick spine, heavy work, wide, straight.
straight cuts, full tang, designed to be, you know, put pressure on. A little light prying, a little light bearing down, etc. Less likely to break than, say, the Kukri. Shorter blade for more precise work. When you're doing a lot of carving tasks, usually you're only using about right here for this. This knife would be very awkward to choke up on and do precision work this way because of its size and its width and the way it fills the hand, at least to my hand. A butcher knife is thin enough and it's so light you can do a lot of work, but in this area is where you're going to do a lot of your precision carving. This up here is not used that much except in full cuts unless you're making something with the tip. This is more of a work slash crafting knife. This strong spear point that comes to a good point allows me to make fire boards. It allows me to do incised carving and things like that. And yet it still does a good job as a cutting knife. So we've got the wide. There's a little bit of a roach belly to it, which makes good draw cuts. But since it's relatively short, it's not going to go very deep at a given time. For 99% of our applications in the field, it's perfectly fine. Unless, and you know where you are, you're dealing with big animal salmon. You know, fish that wide, things like that. In which case, it might be a little light. You want a bigger knife. But for a carrying companion, it's not going to break easy because it's got a good spine on it, got the good bevel to it, and it's wide so it'll go straight through a topic, through a target. It's a good bushcraft knife. Now, the Mora. Everybody needs to try a Mora. The blades are narrow relatively thin and they have different spine thickness. I got the thickest spine I could get of it. The handles are very ergonomic for the hand. The blade is light, thin. What does this tell you? Precision, light cut, pull, twisting in the hand to do multiple angles. It's a good craft knife as well as a working knife. They're light many people and I do many times carry them as neck knives. And so these serve a very good purpose as a general all around knife and a great backup knife to a much bigger knife if you want the time. Disadvantage, they're rat tame and they're kind of short so you can't baton a pretty big piece of wood and there's not much to hit. So if I got it in a, you know, something that wide I only got a tip out here. I can't bang on the handle because it's a rat tang and it's relatively soft wood. It's hard, but you know what I mean. I'm going to beat it up if I go to whacking on it. And so this is not a good batoning knife. This is a very good knife. And so for using, if my predominant use of this is going to be for the cutting of game, for the processing of food, this is a better knife. Especially like with Nesma, pocket knife, belt knife, chopper. That sacred trilogy covers 99% of my thing. And I always have backup blades because I'm probably going to lose all three at one time. More knives are extremely good knives as a bushcraft knife. And you, you'll find tons and tons and tons of videos of clippers and etc. Just depending on what handle design you like, how wide, how thick the blade. They're very, very good bushcraft knives. Now, very old design. This is a Kephart design. Now, you can see similarities in a lot of these knives. Basic idea. This was designed by Kephart to be a belt knife, to fu fulfill the same function like Nesmuk did. You had a small blade for precision work, you had an axe for chopping. This was the everything in between. Pretty good little spine. It's about as thick as a nickel, American nickel. So it's got a decent little spine and it's a straight taper. That tells me, plus the handle is tapered front to back and it's got this little cholo right here for your finger to lock on for a finger guard. This is a very light, handy precision knife. Right on par with that Mora for a knife that I can sit and do precision carving, process my food, etc. 
This would not be a knife I would choose for batoning. Yes, it will baton, but you're asking it to step outside of its comfort box. The blade is fairly wide, wider than the Mora. That narrow blade will want to twist when you start whacking on it. Not every time, but if there's tough grain, it's going to want to follow it because it doesn't have the width to push through it rather than kind of following the grain. And most time when I found a broken mora, it got into something knobby or gnarly and they're trying to whack into it and it starts twisting the blade in their hand and they whack and crack. They don't realize they might as well stick it in the vise and torque it and whack it. Can't take the shot. The Kephart design has got a spear type point, again, very simple. It's good for making fireboards, precision carving, and all your carving tasks. It is not a batoning knife. It's a good knife. Now, a specialty knife, a tracker style. This is one of the knockoffs, don't get upset. Now, having played with this a little bit, and I've you know, used the actual Tom Brown tracker manufactured by the original manufacturer and all, etc. I have never cared for the design. However, I was challenged by a friend to give it a try. Not a year long, but to give it a try. So I brought the knife out and I've been playing with it for a while and with a little modifications it does pretty good. This is supposed to take the place of a chopping knife, like a little hatchet, a drawing knife, a cutting knife, this scallop in the back, that's where I squirt it off to 90 degrees and do my fire steel. And this one does not have saw teeth, it has serrations and I use that as a fish scaler. There are not necessarily this one, but they're specialty knives that are combinations of abilities down here for various jobs. Now, this style knife is kind of like this, or actually I'd say it's more comparable to the little kukri. It's designed to be a light chopper. You choke up on the blade like that and use this like an ulu to do filleting and stuff like that. You have a straight edge right here that's used for chopping. You can also use it, you know, for draw planing, cutting, slicing, batoning, etc. There is no precision edge on it where I can do precise work other than just this little straight edge right here. So this knife is a specialty knife. I'm applying it to whatever my field is that I feel confident that this will do the job. Not a bad design. It's pretty good for actually processing fish and game once you learn the little tricks of it. But it's sort of an odd duck to me. I know a lot of guys like them. I'm not dissing it. The knife that suits your purpose and your choice. But when you look at that knife, what does it tell you? Broad blade. That means it's supposed to go straight through something. Relatively thick. Good spine. Don't flex. Then the edges come into bear. Now, one last type of knife for wind this up. big open L. That's a folding knife. It's not a pocket knife really. It's a folding knife because if you notice when I open it up it's bigger than that bush lower. The actual blade length is actually longer as well. It's thin. Doesn't have much spine on it. So what's that tell you? Wide, straight, thin, cuts deep and clean. This would be good for like processing vegetables. It would be good for processing fish. Doing long strokes like fillet. That back swept tip does almost like a fillet. It would be good for processing large game. It would not be a knife you'd want to baton. It would not be a knife you'd want to bear down and twist on. There's not enough spine to it. And if there's anything I want you to, to come away from this conversation with, it's being able to look at a knife and have it fall into a category so you know where it falls. Is it a thick spine? Therefore it's a chopper. Is it a wide blade? Therefore it's got strength and doesn't want to bend. Is it a thin blade? So it cuts cleanly and deep. And is it a narrow blade? Therefore it can twist in where I'm at and cut curves bone. That's when you hear the term boning knife and things like that. All the knives will serve. If I was stuck in the middle of nowhere with any one of these knives, with my skill level, I would be okay because I recognize the strength and weakness of each one of these blades. 
But there is no, as I said, perfect survival knife. There is no perfect knife. There is the knife you have, your skill level, and what the knife was really, really designed to do. Look at it, see what the blade is telling you when you pick it up, and then apply it to its strengths. Also recognize its weaknesses. Like I pointed out with the K-Bar, the weaknesses is the tang, the weaknesses is the tip, the weaknesses is that. The butcher knife is a good starting blade if you haven't done anything and you just want to get something to play in the backyard, get a butcher knife. If you don't like the length, do a search on YouTube, find out how to cut it off and shape it to what you want. It takes a good edge and it can be used, but what's that wide blade tell you? Straight cuts, deeply. What's that thin edge tell you? Easy to cut, but you don't pry on it and you don't pound on it. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Hope it clarifies a few things. Please leave your comments. Please subscribe. Love to hear from you. And I hope that these videos help you. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.